linear inequalities. Okay, before we do, we're going to look at some systems of linear equations just as a bit of a review. So, if we look at the number letter A, okay, um, neither of these is solved for either x or y, okay, and they're kind of lined up with the x and the y, so I'm going to use elimination. So turning the 4 into a 5 might be a little tricky. It's probably easier to turn this 1 into a 3. Now I need it to be negative because they're both positive right now. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. And I'm simply going to keep the top equation the same. So I'll rewrite the top equation exactly as it is. 4x plus 3y equals negative 2. And the bottom equation, when I multiply by oops, negative 3, I'm going to get negative 15x minus 3y equals negative 9. And now I can go ahead and combine those. Um, negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. The ne 3 plus negative 3, those eliminate. Negative 2 plus negative 9 is negative 11. Divide both sides by negative 11. And I get x is equal to 1. Now that I know what x is, I need to find what y is. So I'm going to substitute that back into any of the four equations. Oh, those are the same. Um, I'm going to choose this bottom one simply because it's right here. So 5, and then in parentheses, 1 plus y equals 3. 5 times 1 is 5, plus y equals 3. Subtract 5 from both sides. y is negative 2. The last step, we need to write our solution as a point. It's always alphabetical order, so x is first, comma, y is negative 2. And we're good. All right, let's look at letter B. This one is set up for substitution. I know that because the bottom equation says y equals. So y is equal to 2x plus 4. So I'm going to take that and substitute it into the top equation where the y to be. So it's going to be 3x plus 6. And then where the y used to be, I'm going to put 2x plus 4. And then everything else about the original equation stays the same. And now I can go ahead and try to solve. The first step to solving is to distribute this 6. So 3x stays plus 6 times 2 is 12, so 12x. 6 times 4 is 24, so plus 24 equals negative 6. Combine my like terms, 3x and 12x combined give me 15x plus 24 equals negative 6. These are not like terms, so I need to move the 24 to the other side, so I subtract 24 from both sides. 15x equals negative 30. Divide both sides by 15 x is equal to negative 2. Now I need to substitute that back in. Well, the bottom equation is definitely going to be the easiest. I'm running out of a little room, but that's okay. We can go up here. So y equals 2 times, we got negative 2 for x, plus 4. So y equals negative 4 plus 4 y equals 0. And again, we need to write it as a point. So negative 2 comma 0. I'm supposed to put this one down here on the line. So there we go. Now I wrote it in the correct spot. All right. So that's a review. So now here's what we're starting today. We are graphing inequalities. So we graphed lines before. This is very similar. Um, we're going to start off the same way. Um, so I'm going to go to my y-intercept, which is negative 8. And then my slope is up 2 over 3, so up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. We go down 2 to the left 3. Now what's different is we need to now decide whether we have a solid or a dotted line. If it's equal to, it's solid. If it does not have an equal to part to it, it is dotted. So this is not, it's not greater than or equal to, it's just greater than. So it's just dotted. So I'm going to go ahead and make a dotted line that connects these. 
and then I need to decide which side to graph. So one of the ways that I like to decide which to shape is to decide that is to choose the point zero, 0, and substitute it in. So 0 is greater than 0 times anything is 0. That's why I pick it. Um, negative 8 so it just kind of makes things very easy. So 0 is greater than negative 8. Yeah, 0 is greater than negative 8. Okay, so that means that I shade the side that has the point 0, 0. Here's 0, 0. So I'm going to shade this side of my line. Okay, we'll go ahead and look at number 2. All right, so my y-intercept is negative 2, so I'll put a point. Okay, my slope is down 1, so it's negative, over 4. Down 1, over 4. We could also go up one, left four, up one, left four. This time it's a solid line because it's greater than or equal to. I'm going to go ahead and make my solid line my best. I don't have a straight edge right next to me, so I don't have something that big right now. Um, and then decide which side to shade. So again, I pick zero, zero. So zero is greater than or equal to. Zero times anything is zero. I'm just left with a negative 2. Is 0 bigger than negative 2? It is. So I'm going to shade the side that has 0, 0. That's the origin. Okay. Let's go ahead. Oh, I forgot to do the bottom part. I made it so big I don't see it. All right, so we'll go here first. One point in the solution is 0, comma 0. I know that because I already picked it. I could have picked 0, comma 2. I could have picked over 2, up 2. Anything that's in the shaded portion, okay? Same here, 0, 0 would work again. So when I check, so I'll just put it down. But I could have picked 0, 2. I could have picked negative 2, 2. Okay, anywhere in the shaded region. Okay, so now we're going to go to our next page. There we go. Okay, so number 3. Which ordered pair is a solution to the inequality? So, remember, they always go x comma y. We're just going to substitute them in. So for a, I've got negative 12 is greater than or equal to negative 3 fifths times negative 5 minus 7. Negative 12 is greater than or equal to positive 3 minus 7. Negative 12 is greater than or equal to Again, on your calculator, you can change that. Just make it 3 divided by 5, make it negative 0.6, okay? And then make, take negative 0.6 times negative 5, okay? Um, all right, so that 3 minus 7 is negative 4, okay? Negative 12 is not bigger than negative 4. It's further to the left in the number line, so this one does not work, okay? Then let's go ahead and let's try B. So negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 3 fifths times negative 10 minus 7. Negative 2 is greater than or equal to, again, negative 0.6 times negative 10 gets me a positive 6 minus 7. Negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 1. No, negative 2 is to the left of negative 1. It's smaller. So it's not B. All right, let's try 0, comma 0. 0 is greater than or equal to 0 minus 7. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 7. Yeah, 0 is bigger than negative 7. So this one does work. We could double check the last one to make sure it's not, um, just to make sure if we wanted to. So we have negative 11 is greater than or equal to negative 3 fifths times 5 minus 7. Negative 11 is greater than or equal to positive 5. So we get negative 3 minus 7. Negative 11 is greater than or equal to negative 10. Well, negative 11 is to the left of negative 10 in the number line. So no, it's not bigger than, it's less than. All right, so C was the only solution that worked there. Okay. Number four, the graph shows the solution to which linear inequality? Okay. So when I get one like this, I'm just going to start by looking at the graph. Well, it's dotted. Awesome. Unfortunately, that doesn't let us eliminate anything. 
then I see it's going through a positive 5 here for the y-intercept. Well, a is a negative 5, so that's not going to work. D is negative 5, so that's not going to work. Then I look at B and C. These are exactly the same, except for the symbol. So I'm going to go ahead. 0, 0 is shaded. So does 0, 0 work for B? Is 0 less than 5? Yeah. So B is my answer. The next one would say 0 is greater than 5. And no, 0 is not greater than 5. So C is not my answer. All right. Number five, in which quadrant or quadrants of the coordinate plane is the shaded region of the linear inequality located? So step one, we have to graph it. So we need to start at negative seven. And then our slope was negative one third. So I need to go down one over three. So down one over three, down one over three, down one over three. You can also go up one left three. Three. One left three. Okay? Then I gotta look, is it dotted or yep, it's dotted. It's not solid, it's just doesn't have the equal to part. Okay. Then I need to shade, well, zero is less than negative seven. Nope. Okay. So 0, 0, or point zero, 0, does not work, okay? So I cannot shade the side with 0, 0. I have to shade the other side. All right, then the hard part. Which quadrant is this? Okay, so the quadrants start in the top right with, where everything's positive. That's where we start. And then we go counterclockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 3 and 4 are my answer. I shaded three and four, letter C. Okay. Number six, graph the inequality and list one point in the solution. Okay, this is a little harder to graph. Okay, it's not solved for Y. So my first step is to simply solve for Y. So I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides. So negative two Y is less than I always like to write the x first, so negative 3x, that was a positive 10, so plus 10. You need to get rid of the negative 2, so I divide everything by negative 2. When I divide by a negative, the inequality symbol flips. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. I am going to keep it as a fraction, so I can say go up this many over that many. And then 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. I'm going to graph this. So I'm going over here, negative 5, go up 3, over 2, up 3, over 2, up 3, over 2. Okay, down 3, over 2. That's all we can do. It is dotted. And then let's check 0, 0. So 0 is greater than 0. Minus 5. Is 0 bigger than negative 5? Yes. So I would shade this side. You could have also checked 0, 0 in this equation, the original. It would be 0 minus 0 is less than 10. 0 is less than 10. Okay? So you can use any of the equations that you make from the original, okay, to decide where to shade. It does go all the way down here. All right. Let's look. Oh, one point in the solution. Well, 0, 0 worked, so I'm writing that one. But it's not the only one I can do, like negative 2, 0. Um, over 2, up 2 also works. Okay, those are all in the solution as well. 